sword of omens. Give me sight beyond sight. I see a new episode of Tooncast coming this week. Beyond good, beyond evil, beyond your wildest imagination. Optimus Solo, what are you doing here? I'm always here. Yes, yes. In the background. Yes, just not always talking. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, this is Tooncast, and this is uh, going to be a clip uh, that plays in front of uh, Tooncast episode 293 to 299, because apparently you've created a third personality or a second personality for yourself. You're just now another 80s geek or something like that. There's this guy I know. He's called Just Another 80s Geek. And uh, he's got this video thing that he does on the YouTubes and things like that. So, yeah, it's uh, called Geek Showcase. It's a chance to highlight all things geeky in a video form. So branching out from just audio. So this will be a chance for you to see all kinds of geeky things, whether they be toys, whether it be just graphics on the screen with top 10 lists and things of that nature, opening packs of cards, going through geeky memorabilia, knickknacks, patty wax, give a dog a bones, um, anything like that. So yes, you should check out the YouTube channel geek showcase, but to give you guys kind of a feel for what kind of stuff goes there, minus the visual part, we're also giving it to you in audio form right here on Tooncast and Podcast. That's right. So if you hear Kevin say something like, you can see this on the screen, it's because this was originally a video where he would put up his diagram of his ultimate Saturday morning cartoon lineup. And you are starting, this is why we're starting in episode 293 to 299, just because those are the next episodes I had available. And you are starting with 1983 all the way up to 1989 and going through basically your ultimate Saturday morning cartoon lineup. Yeah, basically I've seen a lot of people post stuff on social media over the years, whether it be Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, and they always have like, ooh, the best cartoon lineup or this lineup versus this lineup, or they do drafts or they do different things. So I thought I was going to do my take on that basically. So I've created a list for each year from 1983 to 1989. I explain on the records here why i don't do 80 81 and 82 but just real quickly it's just too hard there's not enough cartoons out yet for yeah. the to do those years so it starts in 1983 goes to 1989 there's a bunch of rules that i outline in yep. the record so you'll have to listen to that mainly in the 1983 record i won't do that as much in the subsequent episodes if you want the dirt on how these lists were developed you have to listen to the 1983 episode first all right well that's going to do it, and let the show begin. Yay! Cops, central organization of police specialists. Fighting crime in a future time. Protecting Empire City from Big Boss and his gang of crooks. Hello, this is Just Another 80s Geek, and you are watching The Geek Showcase, where we highlight all things geeky. And without getting too far into it, we're going to get right into the topic today, which is a continuation of our ultimate Saturday morning cartoon lineup series. If you've been paying attention to the channel, we've done these for 1983, 84, 85, 86, and 87. So today, we're going to continue that series with our second to last episode. This is the ultimate Saturday morning cartoon lineup for 1988. As you know from the other episodes, we have eight time slots going from 8 o'clock through 11.30. We're going to highlight eight different half-hour cartoons. Each one has a theme across all the different years, and we can only use each one one time, and they had to have aired new episodes in the 1980s. If you want more of a rundown on how this all, all the rules and whatnot, please go back to the 1983 episode. We take some time and we outline it all there. But we're going to get right into it here for 1988, so in our 8 o'clock time slot. Following the likes of Superbook, Flying House, the Get Along Gang, The Raccoons, The Mysterious Cities of Gold, and Danger Mouse. For 1988, our 8 o'clock time slot, we're going to be watching The Adventures of the Little Koala. I know this is going to be one of the more obscure ones that people have no idea what I'm talking about, but The Adventures of the Little Koala aired from 1987 to 1989, 
actually kept going until 1993, but we're only covering the 80s part. It's 52 episodes, 26 half hours. There was basically a koala craze going on in Japan. They had just received koalas from Australia in their zoos and whatnot, so we got a lot of stuff like this. Adventures of the Little Koala, Noozles, which, you know, Blinky and all that kind of stuff. So the Adventures of Koala was kind of following in on that craze, and this was also a, a version or an example of early anime that made it to the United States. We talked about this when we talked about the mysterious of Citadel, mysterious cities of gold, as well as super book and flying house adventures of little koala does that same thing in the adventures of little koala. We follow along with this koala group and there's other animals as well, but we had Rue Laura, we had mama, Papa, Betty, and then we had horsey kangaroo, Walter kangaroo, Colt kangaroo, Floppy Rabbit and Mimi Rabbit, Pammy Penguin, Nick Penguin, a character called Kiwi. Their teacher was Miss Lewis. Maki Maki was an uh, adult lizard that was kind of interesting. The weather was very cool dingo that uh, was fun to watch. So it was basically this whole world of all of these anamorphic characters, etc., And it was just a lot of fun. It was something that's a little bit aimed towards the younger audiences, obviously. Not for the, you know, the... 10, 11, 12 year olds or anything like this. This probably would have been more suited for the, you know, five, six, seven year olds, etc. But I just thought it was a very fun cartoon. The theme song is fantastic. Um, if you haven't heard that, I definitely suggest that you at least go seek out the adventures of the little koala theme song voice cast was mostly canadian it was dubbed from you know the uh, the japanese series so we have canadian actors here there was a child actor named steven bednarski who did the main character rubert koala's voice he also did the astro boy i believe the dub of that and also had some older uh, more seasoned canadian actors walter massey some of you may remember he was the doctor in the 90s version of lassie Richard Dumont, if you guys are big time geeks and know Nickelodeon series, Are You Afraid of the Dark? This is the guy that played Sardo, the ma- magician, magic shop owner. So there's just some some excellent actors that were also doing voice work that were involved in this. And I just think it's a lot of fun. It was obviously aimed at some values and different things that it was trying to teach the kids. And I think it fits in perfect with our theme, which you may be picking up on. I'm not sure yet. And so it's going to take our 8 o'clock time slot, The Adventures of the Little Koala. Let's see where we go to next with our 8.30 time slot. This would be following the previous year's entries of Smurfs, Heathcliff, The Littles, The Snorks, and The Berenstein Bears. For 1988, the 8.30 time slot goes to... The animated version of Dennis the Menace. Now, obviously, there was a live-action version as well for the Dennis the Menace show back in the day. This was the animated version that aired from 1986 to 1988. aired 78 episodes, which actually makes it the 15th most in the decade. And this is based on a comic strip by a guy named Hank Ketchum. The series was produced by Deke. Syndication originally, and then CBS in Season 2 aired it on Saturday mornings. The show was sponsored by General Mills. Each 30-minute show consisted of three different little mini-segments or stories. And the Dennis the Menace cartoon had the voices of Phil Hartman, Maurice LaMarche, and Robin Thicke's older brother, Alan Thicke's one of his other sons, Brennan Thicke, played the Dennis the Menace character voice. So Dennis the Menace was just a it was a cultural staple, I think, in the eighties. You know, we had seen the live action show, we have the animation, we have the cart uh, the comic strip, which I think I haven't done this list, but I would guess for comic strips in the eighties, this is probably in the top five. 10 for sure, but probably top five comic strips that kids were probably reading in the 80s. So I think Dennis the Menace certainly needs to be represented here for the cartoon version. And I think it fits in well with the theme. So we're going to go with Dennis the Menace in our 830 time slot. Let's see where we go to with our 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock time slot should be a fairly obvious theme here. Like like I mentioned, that Inspector Gadget and Alvin and the Chipmunks, which were the 9 o'clock time slot in 1983 and 1984, have nothing to do with the theme. They just didn't fit anything else, so I threw them in there. But starting in 1985, the theme started, and we had the Wuzzles in 1985. We had the Adventures of the Gummy Bears in 1986, DuckTales in 1987. And now, 1988, we get the new Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. So that theme should be very easy for those that are trying to do that. 
New Adventures of the Winnie the Pooh aired from 1988 to 1989. It actually kept going to 1991. 50 episodes in total, 32 of them aired in the 80s. So this is kind of a crossover cartoon that bridges the end of the 80s into the early 90s. It's the first Disney cartoon based on a major animated film. So the other ones, you know, Gummy Bears was a uh, original. DuckTales was not, that's not based on a movie or whatever. Wuzzles was original. So the New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh is the first one actually based on one of their movies. It aired on the ABC in the Saturday mornings. ABC wanted a Saturday morning show because its lineup was dead last in the ratings, so they picked up the New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, which was very well received. It won multiple Emmys and a bunch of other awards, and it really is responsible in the late 80s of bringing Winnie the Pooh kind of back into the limelight, back into the spotlight. It kind of faded over some time, and this really made it more relevant. And this cartoon was, I mean, painstaking effort put into this cartoon. There was more drawings per minute than any other cartoon on TV. They did 20,000 cells per episode. The average episode of a cartoon at that time would do like eight to 12,000 cells. This one was doing 20,000, so almost double the cells. And they actually did something rare these days. They actually tried to get the original voice cast and was able to do it for some of them. They couldn't get Sterling Holloway. They had him read, but he was just too old to do the part. But they did get John Fiedler to return as Piglet. They got Hal Smith to return as the Owl. Paul Winchell at least started as Tigger before Jim Cummings took over for him. Jim Cummings would also be the voice of Winnie the Pooh. Peter Cullen they got for the voice of Eeyore. So they tried to get as much of the original cast as possible. There was a ton of marketing and promotion for this series through primetime shows. I know the Sears store was doing a bunch of promotion for this. This show started in 1988, guys. Reruns were airing of this show all the way up through 2007. So this show has been on TV a ton over the years. And you might not know this, but this is one of the most valuable franchises in the world. As far as Disney goes... The one and two, it flip-flops over time. There's been times that Winnie the Pooh's been number one and times where it's been number two, but it's always down to Winnie the Pooh and Mickey Mouse. Like, those are the two staples of Disney. And then if you take it into a broader light, like, Star Wars and Pokemon are probably above it as far as in the country, but Winnie the Pooh is one of the most valuable franchises in the United States. So... New Adventures of the Winnie Pooh has to be represented here. It was something that all kids of the 80s knew. So I think it's a perfect spot here, the 9 o'clock time slot in 1988, to give some highlight and give some showcase to the New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Let's move on over to 9.30 for something completely different, all right? Our 9.30 time slot has consisted of Saturday Supercade, Muppet Babies, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling, The Real Ghostbusters, and Fraggle Rock. And for 1988... We're going to something that fits a the theme. I had a couple different choices here. I went with this one. We'll talk more about that in maybe a wrap-up episode. But the 930 time slot goes to Police Academy, the animated series Police Academy. Aired from 1988 to 1989, 65 episodes, so it's tied with a whole bunch of cartoons for 20th most since that was a standard syndicated package. It was a Ruby Spears syndicated cartoon. Obviously, it's based on the film series. And if you're keeping track, if you're a Police Academy nut, it falls between the fourth and the fifth films. Um, some interesting notes. The theme song was done by the Fat Boys. There was an action figure line by Kenner based on the series. This action figure line was pretty cool. I kind of think of it in the same lines of kind of the Dick Tracy toy line. Police Academy kind of did that same thing where it was taken not just a film but a cartoon there and, and doing some things with it. It had some cool play sets and whatnot. There was also a six-issue comic book. I think Police Academy is a great series of movies. The cartoon, well, it's probably not the best cartoon ever. I think it does represent um, a trend that was going on in the 80s. You know, you could have seen a couple different cartoons in this spot. There was a Rambo cartoon and a couple other ones that we might talk about later. So Police Academy, fun little cartoon here. We're going to give it some showcase here on the 930 time slot. That takes us to our 10 o'clock time slot. And this one's going to be following the footsteps of our 10 o'clock time slots throughout the years here, which were Dungeons and Dragons, Kid Video, Gem, Galaxy High, and Beverly Hills Teens. And in our 1988 10 o'clock time slot, we're going with one of my all-time favorites, Denver the Last Dinosaur. Denver the Last Dinosaur. How do you not know that theme song? Denver the Last Dinosaur. He's my friend and a whole lot more. Yeah, this was a 1988 show. It aired for 50 episodes. It, would, it was created by the same guy that created Voltron, Peter Keefe uh, from WEP. It was a syndicated series. Obviously, it's a 
group of teens and this dinosaur that has been kind of transported into modern day and the teens are, are friends with him and kind of showing him what the world is like. It sounds bizarre, but the values and the educational content actually got this series recommended by the National Education Association. So this was, at the time, considered a pretty good cartoon, and it was one of my personal favorites, probably because I just love that theme song. It had some uh, connection with Knott's Berry Farm. I don't know if you're aware of that place, but it offered a Denver the Dinosaur promotional tie-in with its Kingdom of the Dinosaurs attraction, which actually lasted until 2004. Um, the original cartoon had the voices of Pat Fraley, Cass Susi, Cam Clark, Rob Paulson, so some great voice acting there. And I didn't know this until getting ready for this show. Denver the Last Dinosaur actually had a reboot in the 2018 to 2020 range. Depends on which country you're talking about, because I believe it was produced by a, a French company and then it was dubbed into a lot of different languages and produced it and shown in different countries so i don't, I don't know if it made the united states air uh, until like 2019 2020 but i believe 2018 is when it first saw the airways in france so i've never seen that i'm gonna have to check it out and see what it's like and see what the who did the dub voices for the english version because i'm interested in that but denver the Di last dinosaur just a lot of fun also capitalized on a dinosaur craze that was going on in the late 80s, we had shows like Dino Saucers, Dino Riders, things like that. So I think it, it kind of fits multiple themes here. So Denver the Last Dinosaur is going to take our 10 o'clock time slot. Let's see where we go next. All right, time for the 10.30 time slot. This one is an obvious one to me. Following Strawberry Shortcake, Rainbow Bright, She-Ra, Pound Puppies, and My Little Pony... We're going with a show called Care Bears. But yeah, we haven't talked about Care Bears yet, even though it started airing in 1985. It aired from 1985 to 1988. We're featuring it here in our 1988 time slot for reasons. And it was 60 episodes. For those of you that were keeping track, uh, I think the last couple episodes we've talked about where cartoons ranked, if they made like the IGN Top 100 Animated Cartoons or the GeekCast Radio Network's Top 100 Animated Cartoons, Care Bears did make the GeekCast Radio Network's Top 100 list at number 80. Care Bears is a $2 billion franchise. I think it sometimes goes under the radar how long Care Bears has been around, how many times it has been rebooted or featured in films and TV series and things like that. I don't think everybody notices because of the age demographic that it's aired at. Um, this one here that we're talking about, the 1985 one, started as a Deke show, aired in syndication, and then Nelvana took over in 1986 and then retitled it Care Bears Family and obviously some of the animation changes and, and whatnot. But Care Bears was featured in TV specials in 1983, 1984, 1988. It had films in 85, 86, 87, 2004, 2005. The Care Bears movie, one of the 80s ones there, which was produced by Nelvana, became the highest grossing animated film made outside of Disney when it was released. So it was a big deal. Um, the television series then, we had some reboots. In 2007, we had Adventures uh, in Carolot. In 2012, we had Welcome to Carolot. 2015, Care Bears and Cousins. 2019, Care Bears Unlock the Magic. So it has been around. There was more films in 2007, 2009, 2010. So Care Bears has never gone away, guys. It's always been in the limelight throughout the 80s and especially in the 2000s. Like, you know, some parts of the 90s might have been Care Bear less, but... I'm sure the toys were still out there. The greeting cards were still out there. There was over 40 million Care Bears sold between 1983 and 1987. And American Greetings, Greetings, the card company, printed over 70 million Care Bear cards during the 80s. So Care Bears is a cultural staple of anybody that grew up in the 80s. You know who the Care Bears were, and they have just kept reinventing themselves. I have a daughter a two-year-old daughter that has seven care bears that she sleeps with every night and she loves them so care bears is not going anywhere and that's why it takes our 10 30 time slot which means we only have time for two more shows guys for our 1988 lineup starting with our 11 o'clock slot this one should be no surprise what the theme is for both our 11 and our 11 30 we had to have two time slots with the same theme because there were so many cartoons in the 80s that fit this we've already talked about gi joe he-man gobots transformers voltron mass centurions silverhawks visionaries and thundercats which means there's only a few more to talk about guys so for 1988 our 11 o'clock time slot goes to the classic brave star
Brave Star aired from 1987 to 1988, aired 65 episodes, came in at number 64 on GeekCast Radio's top 100 animated list series list of all time. This came the series came one year after the action figures from Mattel. Now these were large action figures at the time. A lot of our action figures back then were smaller, and this one. The Brave Star figures were like eight inches, so they were ahead of their time as far as that bigger size. I got, I just recently obtained a Brave Star and a Tex Hex figure, and they are huge. So um, there was a second series of figures that was designed, but it was never produced because of the show kind of going off the air. It was a syndicated series like so many in the late 80s. This was actually the last, trivia note here, guys, last Filmation series before they shut down in 1989. So, and there was going to be a spinoff of Brave Star called Bravo, but it died when Filmation died, basically. So we never got to see that. The whole series came about from a character created for the 1984 Ghostbusters. All right. There was a 1984 Ghostbusters series, and Lou Scheimer liked this character so much that he asked some of his folks to create a sci-fi western based around the character of Tex Hex. And that is why we got Brave Star. Bob Forward, genius, helped create the writer's guide and co-wrote the movie. Brave Star did have a movie. Uh, voices included Pat Fraley, Charlie Adler, Susan Blue, Alan Oppenheimer, the Shimers, uh, so Linda Gary, so a lot of classic filmation voices there. Tons of merchandising, comics, video games. I think a Commodore 64 had a game for it. The theme song, trivia note here, was sung by Lou and Erica Shimer. And the background effects of Brave Star's power when he gets them is the same that you see in He-Man's Battle Cats transformation. So if you're a nerd and you want to check that out, go watch Battle Cats transform- transformation and then watch Brave Star get his powers and you're going to see some similarities there. Brave Star is a great series. I think it deserves a little bit more love. It's one of the only big time 80s action cartoons that hasn't gotten some type of reboot or attention. It's like that and Silver Hawks. Like, what are we waiting for, guys? So that takes our 11 o'clock time slot. Let's see what comes in for our last slot of the day. For 11.30, we're going to another classic that hasn't received a reboot or anything like that. And we're going to go with Cops. That's C period, O period, P period, S period. Not Cops, the live action reality show all right this is the animated series from 1988 65 episodes it was a deke series and syndication it was rerun on cbs saturday mornings under the title cyber cops because they didn't want to get confused with the reality show cops and you know it's a classic show who doesn't remember fighting crime in a future time or when um bulletproof would say it's crime fighting time i mean this show was great there was a hasbro toy line called cops and crooks kind of designed by the same guy, Bart Sears, who helped with the G.I. Joe toy line, WWF figures, and some of the early X-Men toys. Um, and the toys were interesting. They had, like, actual, like, cap gun type deals, which have never get, you'd never get away with that today. So it is definitely one of the last examples of a toy like that that occurred in the 80s. The show was directed by Kevin Altieri, who went on to direct the Batman the Animated Series, Spectacular Spider-Man, G.I. Joe Renegades, Transformers Rescue Bots. Uh, his first direction gig was with this show, Cops. There was also a 15-issue comic series from DC Comics. And if you collected the toys, you'd understand or you might remember that each toy had a file card that came with it. And these were written by Larry Hama, who did the G.I. Joe ones as well. So the G.I. Joe always had those those file cards that came with the character's profile, bio, etc. So he did very something very similar with Cops. And an interesting note that... There's a connection, too, because there's a character in G.I. Joe called Wayne R. Beachhead, and his last name is Sneedon. Well, if you look at Checkpoint from Cops, his name is Wayne R. Sneedon III, and it states in his bio that his father was a member of a top-secret military team during the 80s and 90s. So there is a Beachhead Checkpoint connection, thanks to Larry Hama. This series also contains work by Peter Chung, who is the guy that is responsible mainly for the style of, of Aeon Flux. And this is where he, he had done a couple films and series, but Cops is kind of the first series that he worked on that showed signs of kind of his distinct style that would later be developed in Aeon Flux. So Cops has a lot of interesting trivia tidbits. I think it's a great show. And like I said with Brave Star and Silverhawks, what are we waiting for, people? We need reboots or live action films or animated films or another animated series like come on don't leave us hanging here 
So that is our 1988 time slot. Let's run it down one more time. We had The Adventures of the Little Koala at 8, followed by Dennis the Menace, The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Police Academy, Denver the Last Dinosaur, Care Bears, Brave Star, and Cops. So that's our 1988 lineup, guys. We only have one more year left, so our next episode that does this series will feature the Ultimate Saturday Morning Cartoon lineup for 1989, and then that will be a wrap. We'll do one wrap-up episode revealing the theme for each hour and just to kind of wrap it all up. So I hope you've been enjoying the series. Until next time, this is just another 80s week, and you have been watching the TV Showcase. Listen to the 33-second clip. Yes. Listen very carefully. Do it. <laughs> Show off for his girlfriend.